Hi, everybody. We're, we're back on air. How about that? <laughs> Welcome to Friday, October 3rd, I haven't worn my, I wore my fancy t-shirt. Me too. Um, we we want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Uh, we are, are and or took a break for a little while. We've been doing this show for going on five years, and we just needed to take a little bit of a break. Yeah, we've been doing this show for almost six years. Yeah, yeah. Um, before we get going, Rug, we got a really special guest tonight, and I'm sure everybody's here to see him. Um, I wanna, yeah, not me, our guest. Well, uh, but they might come to see me. They might. I doubt it, but maybe. All right, here we go. Um, y'all be sure and tune in during the week. Check our ads during the week. You can find all kinds of great entertainment, uh, not only on Pin, but on Pin Two and on our Pin Radio page. Um, and as always. P.E.N. is powered by Metaluna Boutique and Stones, one of our guest's favorite hangouts, and apparently he has a job there, too. <laughs> yeah. But tonight, we are joined by our very dear friend. Um, he is the owner and operator of Paranologies, um, a supplier of outstanding paranormally-based equipment and, Mine's right over and there. devices. Is that a good right term, Jeremy? Yeah, that'll work. All right. Uh, but we're joined tonight by Mr. Jeremy Jones of Paranology. Jeremy, how have you been? We, it's like we haven't seen you since like last weekend. I know, man. It's been a long time. How you guys been? Oh, we've been good. We've been good. Well, I, I know I know you've, you've done these. You've, we, we've actually had you on the network several times. And I know you've, you've done probably more radio interviews, internet radio interviews, than you can shake a stick at. But just one more time. What was the inspiration? Let everybody know what the inspiration was for why and how you started Paranologies. My inspiration was uh, actually helping out families. Um, you know, I would do investigations. I do have my own team, um, Texas Paranormal Investigations. I've had it for quite a while, since 97. Uh, and I was always intrigued with poltergeist cases, which usually surrounds children. Um, and so, you know, 99% of my investigations are residential. So I would go in there, you know, with our old cameras and stuff we had and, and constantly try to come up with new ways to explain to the homeowner what's going on in their house. Um, you know, I went to school for electrical and audio engineering. So building gadgets is, is not, you know, hard at all. It's just trying to come up with something, you know, easy to show my client, hey, you may or may not have something in your house, but but here's why. And then instead of bringing them all this equipment in digital format that they're not going to understand, I'm trying to make right. simplify it in, in little, you know, pods and things that I design. Where did you guys get that picture of me? Oh my God. Oh, oh, the Yeti has his ways, Jeremy. You should know that. <laughs> After last weekend, game on, buddy. Um, oh yeah. Um, we all got last weekend. <laughs> yeah. What happens in Gladewater stays in Gladewater. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, you know, and the, the one thing I want I want to mention real quick, so all of our viewers know, um, your equipment. Um, and let me let me turn on this breed example that is actually my wife's. Um, all of your stuff is very visual, and I'd like to thank you for that. There it goes. Yeah. Because because it, it when you start to do video and you want to try to record things and you want people to be able to see how a device works or be, even be able to know that it goes off. Um, mm -hmm. The way the way you've come at things, I'm 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 I'm, I'm impressed with how you you thought about how to make that happen. And cool, we, I appreciate it. And we've we've even talked about some stuff that you had planned to try in the future with some, uh, some stuff that's going to probably cook people's noodles. And we've got we even do have an announcement for the new item that you have on your website too tonight. But we'll get to that here in a minute. Um, okay. Uh, what's what's been your just just so to to keep the viewers informed because this is this is not necessarily about prior knowledge it's about you too. What's what's been okay. your personal motivation uh, with, with all of this? With the with not just the not just the company but your involvement in the paranormal. What what's been your motivation to keep you going? Right, it's just um, personal intriguement to the afterlife. You know, what happens after we die? Um, can we talk to our loved ones? Um, just trying to put some of those questions at ease to not only myself, you know, I've been lucky that I haven't had many of my loved ones, um, pass my, 
my grandparents just died last year, and that was the first experience I had actually dealt with death. Um, I handled it pretty well, I think, you know, but uh, I have tried to communicate with my grandparents, and um, might as well. I've been doing it for <laughs> just about all my life. But, yeah, I think it's just personal treatment of what, what there is after, you know, after we pass. I know. I know. We've we've in a lot of the people that we've talked to and met in the paranormal, Kim and I, that's been everybody that has truly has a fire burning for it. Um, there's a personal motivation behind it, and it, and I just like to ask people that way. Our viewers kind of get to see that you know people that are that are being interviewed on Pima TV, even though they are hugely popular, they're still people too. You know, right. pe people lose that perspective sometimes on 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 when they get to. Thinking about celebrities or the parasol, the parasolevs, or even even just like normal actors and actresses, they kind of lose perspective that they're they're human too, you know. Right. People talk to them like they're their character. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? So I, I like yeah, I always just, I always like to make sure people feel can kind of see that that human side of everybody. Right. You know that's the one question that it it's too hard to answer. I mean, what happens after you die? And, right. That's what, that's what keeps me in this hobby. I do some other hobbies like storm chasing, things like that. And uh, I've lost a lot of hobbies just from being bored of them or whatever. But I can't really call this a hobby anymore. It's my life. But, uh, you know, it, it does keep me very well involved with that question. Well, isn't it funny how we all start out with doing this as a hobby and all of a sudden it <laughs> just kind of takes over everything? Yep. Yeah, I am blessed to be doing what I love for a living, I will say. Have you uh, have you run or ever run across anything that you you had to call in any kind of help for or? Yeah, I mean, I've, uh, there's there's so many things you try to do to put the homeowner at ease, and I don't I don't do a lot of those things. I mean, I go in there and, and try to give them the best answer I can, you know, from what my either my equipment or my cameras catch I, I never tell them it's a ghost or, or anything factual i never tell them anything like that but i do you know have several ways that i can get some help may put them to ease um i've got several people richard Contreras, you guys know him um you know i've got just different ways that i can offer the homeowner that they may be comfortable of them coming out well i think i think that's the best way because i mean some people go in and Oh, it's a demon, and that just freaks them out even more. Or they leave their house, <laughs> or you know, uh, yeah. just, just ridiculousness. Yeah. Oh, I've I've got some great ones. I mean, I've had people say there are fairies in closets, and oh, five hundred dollars later, they'll get rid of it. Yeah. For for mere mere thousand dollars, I can remove that curse that's been following you for all yeah. these years. <laughs> yeah. Gaze. Gaze into the egg. No, no, I'm kidding. Um, yeah. Let's 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 just kind of let's let's talk a little bit about some of the stuff you got coming out, Jeremy. Because um, the first picture I'm going to put up is of your newest device um, called the Infrascope, and you, we talked about this this weekend. I'm really excited about this. I, have you had any more field tests with this? I've had one field test, and I'm actually as soon as I get out there with you guys, I'm going to head out and do another one. Um, awesome. Specifically on just that piece of equipment. Um, yeah, I mean, you want me to tell you a little about it? It's basically, you know, a lot of my equipment is based off uh, static or, or some kind of something that has to do with electromagnetic field has to interrupt whatever it is, and that's how a lot of paranormal equipment is. So I'm trying to get into more of, you know, I told you before I was highly interested in, in poltergeist cases, which objects move on their own or can be touched, etc. And um, so I'm trying to deal with new sensors that actually have to be physically manipulated or, you know, just very sensitive pieces of equipment. Now, the Infrascope has several features that can be used. I designed it first off to detect infrasound. Uh, what is infrasound? Anything under 20 hertz, which, um, you know, it's a low enough frequency that you're not going to consciously hear it, but your ears will still sense it. And so what that does is it just basically drives your mind, you know, havocly with emotions. And you don't know why. 
Well, you know, your air conditioner, your refrigerator, uh, nature, everything produces infrasound. We just can't hear it. We can feel it, especially when you have those guys in cars driving, you know, around in the base and stuff like that. But um, even the cars that you feel rattling through your house, that's only 20, 30 hertz right at that infrasound, you know, peak. So, you know, anything below that can, can basically cause you to experience dread, fear, and panic. And I'm trying to educate people on that because a lot of these hauntings may have something to do with infrasound. A lot of people don't know also that uh, scientists have taken infrasound and they found out that your eyeball will actually oscillate at 19 hertz. And you can't see it or feel it, but what it does, it'll actually make you see shadows. So let's say you have an air conditioner right outside your window, and it kicks on, infrasound's going through your wall, vibrates your eyeball, there's a shadow. You know. Wow. There's also, uh, you know, a lot of different things with infrasound. I can tell you some studies I've done where I'll get a real-time analyzer, which basically analyzes uh, all the different frequencies of audio through the microphone. So... You know, we're doing an EVP session sitting around, and I've got somebody at command center watching these peaks. Like when I'm talking right now, you know, if anybody knows what an equalizer is out there, probably know it through your car, mid, bass, and high. Well, those are separated into frequencies. Like your mid-range, like our voices right now, are about, you know, one hertz or one part. So when we're sitting here asking these EVP questions, all of a sudden I'm getting a spike at 17, 18 hertz which is in the infrasound range. Right. Um, I correlated that to the EVP, and I've done that on several investigations. So there's definitely something also involved with, with EVPs and infrasound. Um, you know, of course, there, it takes a whole lot more study to say, yes, that's where EVPs are dedicated in that field, of, you know, infrasound. But I do have some, some clips and things that I can show or that do correlate. So... You know, my hopes are that slowly I can study infrasound and maybe we can reverse engineer EVPs where we can send back something in that same spectrum and communicate that way. That would be that. And that would be a huge breakthrough. Um, you know, that, right. that's, that, that's something I know from my own personal experience in reviewing our own, our own uh, data that we've collected. Um, a lot of the EVPs do, they, they, they drop below that 20 hertz range where you can hear it, where you can't hear it, but it's there. And right. other, than, other than just turning up the volume on, on, on a headset that I was reviewing with, I never manipulated it, but when you go back and put it on like a, the particular program I, I have, I think it calls it a sound footprint. I think mm -hmm. Audacity calls it uh, something else. I mean, basically what it is, is it's just a visual representation, frequency-wise, of, of, what, of what you're listening to. Right, and that yeah, you get that waveform, and yeah, like, and you get to see that it's below human hearing, so you wouldn't have never heard it to begin with. Um, just real right. quick, too, to add to what you were saying, infrasound is also the same type of communication used by whales and elephants. Elephants actually communicate more with infrasound um, than they do with audible hearing. Right, tigers as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's everywhere. People don't realize it. Um, it it's something that needs to be looked in and, and before I designed any piece of equipment, you know, I go out there and look and see what's out there and there's there's not much for the paranormal world. I mean, you can get some pro audio equipment that costs thousands of dollars um, and, and go that route. But like I said, you know, we're trying to keep this simple. Oh yeah. Well and what what so what exactly does the infrascope detect, Jeremy? All right. So basically it's gonna detect anything under uh, twenty hertz. It'll probably start you know I've you know, basically, I've built a subwoofer, and I can tell you what range that subwoofer is at. So I, this will detect anything 30 hertz and under. Uh, the particular subwoofer I did a test with, it was an 18-inch sub in a fifth water box, so it will produce some very low frequencies, um, but, but not as low as I'd like to go. You know, when you get down to 16 hertz and under, it's, it's very hard to reproduce. Right. So what I've done with the infrascope is I've built a, a, a diaphragm, it's about a six inch in diameter diaphragm. It's very thin um, and it has a sensor in there that when that diaphragm vibrates, you know, the sensor will go off. I have it calibrated specifically for infrasound. I could actually, you know, adjust it for other sounds as well, but what I'm trying to study is infrasound, obviously. 
So um, when this diaphragm, uh, when it detects infrasound, which is a very big wave, if you looked at, at the spectrum, you know, you get up in the higher frequencies in the kilohertz, it's a very tight wave, but infrasound is a low wave, so it's, it's very wide if you're looking at it on a oscilloscope. So it will definitely vibrate this uh, diaphragm, and, and it'll, it'll let you know, hey, I've just detected, you know, infrasound. Um, now, just like any piece of equipment we use for paranormal investigating, uh, it can false. Anything out there will. What I mean by false is if I wave a piece of paper, well, yeah, I guess you could use a piece of paper. It's, it's super sensitive diaphragm, but if I wave a piece of paper six inches in front of it, it's going to go off. I mean, because the wind obviously blowing on the diaphragm. And you, so you got to use your own discrepancy when you're doing any type of paranormal investigating with any sensor. I mean, it, it would be obvious if somebody's sitting there by it and it goes off. Um, you wouldn't want to take it. That, to, you wouldn't want to take it to river dancing class or anything. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, that wouldn't be good. But if you're doing a um, an investigation and you know every everybody's accounted for and still and and you can get communication with this, and it's another good tool to use. I, uh, what, what also is good about it, you can, it's super sensitive. So it does have a, a knob on there where you can adjust it. You know, if there's a refrigerator or something right by it and you need to detect that area, you can actually tune out the infrasound of the refrigerator. But what, I, what I've used it for lately is putting, like, toys, trigger objects, anything on the diaphragm, and uh, it's so sensitive you know, you can blow on it from about two to three feet away. You could set it that sensitive. It'll actually detect that. So it's, it's going to be a good little detection unit to see what I get out of it with uh, trigger objects and, and just a little touch pad, you know, if you're there, touch the pad. Yeah, so and that so that would also be, I mean, this is also going to be a great piece, a great piece of equipment to use if you're uh, either, like you said, doing a solo investigation or, or just filming an area. This would be a great device to have there to put out in front of a camera, let's say in a room by itself. Right. Where you have total control over who's in there, who's not, whatever. Well, I would assume this is not recommended for outside investigations. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah if, especially if it's windy outside. Well, you know, and then airplanes, and there's all kind of things, yeah. Well, <laughs> even a bug jumping on it or landing yeah. on it. Yeah. Yeah, let's hope you get that and keep it in frame. <laughs> yeah. I, I like cameras. Lots of cameras. Yeah. Um, you know, Jeremy, you had mentioned earlier that, that uh, uh, you know, infrasound is a very low frequency wave. Right. Um, do you, uh, how, what, what is your, when it, talking about cameras, do you think that we're going to capture, do you think, Infrared being the slowest of the light waves that we, we, we quote unquote capture in the paranormal, you know, the ultraviolet being, of course, a faster uh, wave. Um, do you, what, in, what end of the visual spectrum do you think we're going to have more luck with? Well, you know, everybody investigates the infrared wave. Um, I, I tend to do both. It's, it's going to depend on your cameras, of course. Um, I, I don't have a, you know, very good answer for that because we don't know. I mean, we could go all the way down in the radio waves, which is two steps below infrared. It's just, you know, you don't know that's the problem. We're in such a small area of the visible light that you just cannot cover that amount of, of uh, spectrum with, with the amount of data it would take. I mean, the long wavelengths start with radio and microwaves to infrared, take a lot of data to capture all those. Yeah, well, and I, I've, I've had it explained to me that the electromagnetic spectrum is it, like the Empire State Building. It's, if you put it, if you made a scale, a model of it, it'd be as big as the, as the Empire State Building. The visible light spectrum is like one little, is as thick as one little piece of linoleum <laughs> in, yeah, that, in that spectrum. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, think about that. If and we're we're setting our cameras, even you know they can't go go below microwaves. Some of them right. can, but I'm talking about you know the ones you buy off the shelf. So we're sitting here studying a very small spectrum, just like you said. 
yeah. and time to reach out beyond that spectrum. But that's where it gets, you know, expensive. Um, but as as research and electronics come down, well, that's I'm sure that's where we're headed. That's where I'm headed, at least. Yeah, yeah. And then once again, like you said, it's just about you. You can build it now, but it's it's so pricey. It's just it's ridiculous. But, yeah. But that's also because it's never been used. The things right. that you would use to detect it with are very expensive things, so you kind of don't mind spending that much money to to go back and do that. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, most of my prototypes, I'm putting in two or three thousand dollars, and especially more on the cameras, but two or three thousand just in research. You know, trying different electronics and uh, trying to keep it cheap for the consumer, because you know, yeah, we all know it's expensive. Well, we all know that paranormal investigators make so much money. Yeah, well, the, yeah, the, the <laughs> millions of dollars in paranormal, you know, in internet broadcasting that Kim and I are raking in on a daily basis. Mm. It's, it's, it's yeah. almost uncountable. Uh, I know. That's why how I can afford to have Jeremy as a cashier. That's right. Because you, <laughs> you know right. that hourly wage. A lot of people will pay my weekend job. Uh, you know, Jeremy, there, there's, there's been people that have asked, um, what's 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 the one piece of advice that you would give to somebody that's an investigator um, that that of mistakes that you've seen people make? What's the one thing that you would would want to try to correct the most from what you've seen? There's a, I guess the one thing is false positives. Uh, in other words, telling a homeowner or, or someone that's already scared that there's something there when you're not 100% sure. Right. Um, I, I, I just, I go in here into this trying to ease the homeowner, you know, mm -hmm. ease these people's fear of the paranormal. There's, there's not a lot to be fearful of if you know what it's about. Um, but, but yeah, I would say, you know, the false positives and going in there saying that, Yes, you do have something when when you're not you don't have anything to back that up with. That's that's I tend to go into a lot of cases where you know two or three paranormal groups have already been out there, and I go out there and I, you know, I don't see the same results they're getting, and and they haven't shown the results to the homeowner yet. So it's just just scaring the people is 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 my, but, you know my thing. But they got but they got an, do but they got an orb on the camera. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I know we're only talking about two pieces, Eric. But before we go, I need to. There's a camera I'm coming out with that I'll mention. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's fine. So I can take that little hint that move along. Um, the next the <laughs> next device that I have some pictures for um, is is actually this is when you showed this to me in Jefferson last year. Uh, this was this was like the coolest thing since sliced bread, especially how you were able to design this. But Jeremy, t let everybody know about the. The Paranology's Panoptic PDA. All right. So, you know, I just came up with a little artsy little title there. PDA stands for Paranormal um, Di Distribution Attorney. So if anybody doesn't know what that means, <laughs> you can grab an attorney, and they'll actually help you with uh, these cases that we've been talking about when people come in there. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm joking. <laughs> no. no, it stands for Paranormal Digital Assistant, and basically what that is is I've taken cell phones. We all know that cell phones these days are perfect for, you know, videoing. They're high def. They're compact. You can upload the videos right to YouTube. Um, you can immediately review. You've got a screen. You can put SD cards in them. I mean, they're great. Problem is they're not night vision. So, you know, we love investigating in the dark. It's fun. Yeah. So what I've done is I've actually taken uh, some Evo 3G or 4G cameras. I bought quite a few of them, and uh, I've converted the cameras to full spectrum. When I say full spectrum, I mean the full spectrum of the the camera camera's ability. It will not go into the microwaves and low infrared, deep infrared, high UV, things like that. Those cameras are tens of twenty thousand dollars. So um, you know this basically I've taken a mold molded over the, the cell phones. Um, they have an IR illuminator, my orbular IR illuminator, so it doesn't have that little halo that I hate seeing in the footage. 
And it's just a nice portable camera that, um, I mean, it's perfect for paranormal investigating. And if you could also, um, you could link several of these together, couldn't you? You can almost turn these into wireless yeah. cameras too, correct? Yeah, actually there's a, a program on my site that you can free download, and I, I put them on there. They're preloaded as well, but it's called IP Webcam. And what that does is that basically uh, you attach it to your home router or whatever router you're going to take on your investigation. And it gives it a specific IP address, and you type that into your web browser, and now your camera, your PDA, has become a total wireless camera. Um, and you can have as many as you want. You can have 100 in there if your bandwidth will hold it. Yeah. And Jeremy so, yeah. hopes everybody buys 100 of them. Yeah, I would love it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, I have to ask, why... What was it? Just the fact that you were sitting there looking at cell phone video on Facebook, or I mean, where did where did that come from? I, you know, some things come at me in my dreams, or just in ran, random places, and I will drive myself crazy for the next two hours trying to get the thing built. So literally, this hit me, and I had it built in like two or three hours later. I just couldn't take it. Um, I, I don't really, other than. You know, I do have a lot of DVR systems out there, and a lot of people don't like messing with DVRs because the footage is so hard to get off of. Right. You know, trying to transfer that footage to your computer and vice versa, it's just hard. So, again, all my designs I'm trying to simplify it, and, and this is the simplest thing you can get camera-wise, you know, to get the footage off of. Everybody knows how to get their pictures and videos off their own cell phone, so this should be pretty simple for almost anybody. Right. So... Get out there and get to, everybody needs to, I'm going to go ahead and say this, I'm going to type in the chat room too when I put this up, but everybody needs to go to Paranologies, P-A-R-A-N-O-L-O-G-I-E-S dot com, <laughs> Paranologies dot com, um, and they can find all this information, how to order it, how to contact you, it's all in there, right? Yeah, it's all there, super easy. Okay. So what's this super duper top secret thing that you're gonna <laughs> tell us about, Jeremy? <laughs> that you're gonna let me talk right. out first. See, I gotta let you what? Huh? I have to let you what? I said you agreed to let me try out first. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. <laughs> hey, Jefferson's coming up. It'll be there. That's true. It is. <laughs> in, in, less, uh, in, in, le in about a month, that that doesn't seem. I mean, twenty-eight days. Thank yeah. you very much. She's not twenty-eight <laughs> days. 22 hours, 35 minutes, and 12 seconds. Keep <laughs> keeping track. Yeah. It's, uh, I'm building for it now. You know, for the last three years, I have sold out in the first five minutes of that show. Mm -hmm. Mainly, uh, thanks to Larry Flaxman on that one, but <laughs> he loves buying all my new stuff. He did last time, too. I remember well, that. Well, yeah, and Larry has, to Larry has to defend himself against those vicious laser-eyed poodles that are there. That's right. Too. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I heard that story. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I cannot wait. I'm, uh, I'm going to be prepared this year. I gotta, actually, I'm going to be speaking at that convention as well for the first time. I'll be going to it for eight years. It's about time. <laughs> Maybe she, she finally noticed you were there. Yeah. I don't know how you can't notice me. My, you know, my Your convention banner is huge. <laughs> <laughs> well, but what's this, what's this camera, Jeremy? All right. So here it is. I'm going to be hated or loved by this. I don't know. So there's, Kim was talking about orbs earlier. That's a dirty word, huh? Yes, it is. Um, I, uh, you know, I wanted to design something where if somebody shows me a clip of an orb, uh, I'm not going to classify it myself because I don't have the equipment to do that. I can tell you what I think it is just off knowledge that I've done. Most likely it's dust or bugs. Yes, the clip you show me has a beautiful, intelligent pattern. I get it. Problem is, we can't 100% take that to a, a homeowner and say, hey, your Uncle Charlie's here. Here he is floating around the room. So, I'm going to design a camera that will capture the, you know, classification of an orb that most people will agree on in the paranormal world. Uh, it, you know, create its own light source. Um, intelligent pattern, a lot of other different things. I'm going to design a camera that has two channels on it, 
it's going to be a two-channel DVR. So when you're looking at it on the screen, it's going to be split screen. So you're going to have a camera on the left, a camera on the right. Both of these cameras are going to be focused on the exact same point. So if you look at it, you're going to be seeing the same thing on both screens. The difference is one camera is going to be a full spectrum. The other one is only going to be in that small visible light spectrum that Eric and I were talking about earlier. So it's not going to detect your infrared, IR, or anything like that, just the small visible light. So when we're sitting here in the dark, if you do truly have a paranormal orb, it should show up on both cameras if it's going to meet those classifications. That's correct. If it, if it only shows up on one, most likely what's happening is that infrared light is bouncing off that dust, bug, whatever it is, and just going into that camera that detects infrared. I've had many people tell me, yes, I've seen that. You know, the first thing I say is, did you see that with your own eyes? Usually the answer is no, but I've had a lot of people say, yes, I did. And that's what I'm after, those clips. You know, if something like that shows up on both cameras and you're sitting in the dark, there's something there created its own life source. I would be glad to say, yes, that's something paranormal or a lightning bug. So I've either detected a lightning bug or a nice piece of uh, paranormal evidence. That's very cool. That's uh, that'll also now if you could just go ahead and create those, Jeremy. Go ahead and make about a million and a half of them, if you would. Um, yeah. And 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 we'll give those out. They'll, we'll give those out free to all the people that post pictures of orbs on Facebook. Yeah. That would be That's I think, a good idea. That would be that would that would move this field along so fast. <laughs> yeah, I need some volunteers to help me put them together. If that's the case, but yeah. Yeah, well, we, I'm sure we could get some volunteers. You know, we, we I mean, you'd have to, you, you might have to cut back on your hours at the shop on the weekends. Right, yeah. yeah. Hey, now, you're cutting into my time now. Yeah, well, you know, oh. you know, all the insurance and everything that he gets working out there at the shop. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not out there trying to say kill orbs by all, any means. Uh, it's one of the most, you know, talked about things in this field and, and shown about things. And I'm just trying to you know, show further legitimacy to it actually being dust, bug, whatever. Um, and it's, it's harder to find an actual paranormal orb than, than what most people think. Well, it, it, and it would, it would make it more clear for those who think everything is an orb and Great Aunt huh. Martha if, right. with, with this piece of equipment. Because, I mean, I had one guy who argued for literally weeks over a snowflake over a tombstone, but he said it was o directly over the tombstone, so it couldn't have been moisture. It had to be an orb. Yeah. Yeah. Because snow doesn't fall directly on top of right. tombstones. <laughs> no. Not at all. But it, it, yeah, it's, it's a debate I don't ever get into with people because it's just, you know, you, you can't convince people. No, so I that's just shown with science. But he asked my opinion, and then when yeah. I gave it, then it became a debate, and finally I'm like, okay, fine, I'm done. Yeah, because right. Jeremy, me and you have me and you have had this discussion, you know, um, in person about too that one of the biggest problems we have, not only in the paranormal but in all aspects of life, is about free thought and people thinking, right. people thinking for themselves, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's what we want people to do. But that's that's the great thing about your devices is, since they detect very specific things, if people use them properly, um, I'm not going to say they're not undebatable, but it, it's pretty tough to it's pretty tough to deny something, you know. Especially like with this new right. camera. If you had this new camera and you had the infrascope. Mm -hmm. And you had them both in the same spot, and you record also recorded an EVP at the same time, and you can correlate the video with the infrastructure going off with you recording EVP. It's gonna yeah. be awfully tough to say that's not anomalous and not. It's gonna be hard to explain, you know, how all three could go off that way, and and people right. need to start looking at it that way, or we hope people will start looking at it that way. Right. You know, and then once we do, you know, get great results out of you know, the infrascope and, and other things, then I can move into more detailed analysis. I mean, I can go deeper, but I've got a lot of other different pieces that uh, I'm, I'm trying to reach out there and some, just go a different route than everybody else is. I will tell everybody, you know, I can give you the cheapest um, 
if you want to get rid of your, your dust orbs and your cameras, I'll give you a, a very cheap hint. I did this for about a year trying to prove, or actually disprove. <laughs> Go grab you a computer um, little fan, those real small ones, you know, three, four inch in diameter. Hook it up to a nine volt battery and let it, uh, and put it right in front of, or beside your lens of your camera. And that will blow away all the dust and you will not see a dust orb. Yeah, but see that people would get relative pictures after they pass. <laughs> yeah, and it's going to kill your audio. Yeah, well, other than uh, but other than that, you you got to kind of know whether yeah. some of these people who are absolutely positive it is a specific relative of theirs, if they don't like blow it up and frame it and put it on the wall. Yeah, yeah, or you know, put it up on the mantle, you know, right next to their urn or whatever. I mean, right. uh, people, I, you know. I know people need, and like you said, a lot of people get in there to help other people, um, and, and and God bless you, and God bless everybody that does all that. Um, but pe some people take this to such an extreme, you know. Yeah. And I mean, I guess it's just like any hobby. There are extremes on, on on both ends. But like you said, this becomes for some of us. This has become much more than a hobby. Than a hobby, and and an obsession. I guess addiction is a much more descriptive word right. of, of, of what it actually is. Right. You know? Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm thankful that, I'm, you know, three years ago I was at an engineering job that I had for 15 years, and here I am. I gave that up right. to take this on full time. And that was a hard step, especially when you have five kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you wonder, you know, that's why our booth is so big. People don't realize it, but my kids are behind that booth. <laughs> Why? Well, I mean, with all the lights and everything that go with it, somebody's going to be back there pedaling the bicycle to make the lights go. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And no, let me throw that disclaimer out there. Jeremy is not for child labor. Let's just go ahead and throw that out there. <laughs> and I think you can put that tool down while we're talking about that. Right. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> and I think I've only met one of his children ever. Yeah. At an event, so it's not like he has all five back there right. pedaling at right. one time. <laughs> well, that'd be a really big bicycle. That's why the banner's so big. It's got to cover up that huge five-person bicycle. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, they're out there torturing all the, you know, the psychics, and they're trying to get free crystals and, and all kinds of stuff. They come back with the craziest stuff. I'm like, you got $100 worth of stuff here. Where'd you get it? Oh, they gave it to me. That's because yeah. they're cute. I have to tell you though, Jeremy, the the video you posted on the bridge where the kids freaked out that guy was was priceless. Oh, that was funny. What are yeah. you doing, Wait. hunting ghosts? Yep. Off <laughs> he went. Man, they're not playing. Let's get out of here. <laughs> you know, that and, and that's, yeah. that, that that was that's something a lot of people have a, a misconception. They they're still a huge person. Even though I know, like, how could they not know about the paranormal mal? How could you not? Um, there's still a huge percentage of population that has no idea what we do or what a paranormal investigator is supposed to be like. Or, you know, we're, to a certain degree, we're still the creepy couple that walks around in the graveyard. Yeah, yeah. It's getting better. People are seeing it on TV and, and uh, you know, my kids are telling the teacher the school I do for a living, you know, I hunt ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> so, we go to our PTA meetings, and it's like, are they going to ask me about it? And some do. <laughs> well, you know, but that's that's the whole fact that they ask you about it, and they just don't sit and, you know, and hush whispers and, 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 and pointing, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, you'd be surprised. I mean, people open up about it quick when you, when you tell them. We've been at a tattoo and horror convention before. We were the only paranormally based thing there. Yep. And we had a line going around our booth for most of the day, and two or three <laughs> people tied up because people were just walking up telling us ghost stories. It was great. <laughs> it was gr and of course now they're they're tattooed up and zombied and everything else. But I mean, it was it was great. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Have you, are, are, and people can also catch you at most of the large conventions and gatherings this year and next year too, right? Right, yeah, I'm going to do a lot more next year. I mean, we have been behind. We've we've had, I don't know how many orders in the last five, six months, but um, it's put us behind by about a month, and this is the first month we have been caught up. I mean, you know, my wife, Pam, we, I've taught her 
she builds a lot of this stuff. I've taught her so much in a year and a half, it's, it's nuts. And if I didn't have her, we wouldn't have a company. And uh, she's really got me ahead of the game. So this year, we're going to do a lot more conventions. Um, the problem was last year, we just did not have the product. And I don't want to show up somewhere with no product. That's right. That's right. And people do need, do need to understand that you hand build from the time of order. So it's not like there's a huge warehouse of this stuff already just laying around somewhere. Right. Yeah, I mean, especially, you know, now that we're caught up, we're going to build, you know, some of our specialty items that sell a lot, have them ready to go. But most of the time, it's, it's not too far out. Two or three days, you can get your stuff. Right. But, yeah, it is built from scratch, 100%. I mean, we take a flat piece of plastic and, and mold it and cut it out, put the electronics in it, and we're done. Yeah. Well, I just wanted people to understand that it's not like you're 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 actually designing, building it, smelling the solder, burning the whole nine yards. Well, it, it's not one of those like these stupid infomercials to where yeah. they they've got a back storage room full, absolutely full of stuff they purchased, and they're sticking their sticker on it. No, he's actually from. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's a good thing too about you know when you're inventing something new, you can you can do it. You don't have to send it to a manufacturer and. I can have a prototype built of something in two hours if I want to. Well, yeah, and then the corporate the corporate meetings take place at the dinner table, right? <laughs> yeah, they sure do. Yeah, and I bet and I bet your commute in the morning is what shuffling from the bedroom oh, to the man. garage. I mean, that's just, that's the morning commute. It's rough, I will tell you. <laughs> it is a it takes a lot of gas up. I bet you got hell. I bet you got hell getting a traffic report too, don't you? <laughs> yeah, you know I. Our, scat, our hours are crazy here just because we have the kids during the day, um, you know, so we tend to work at night. We start working, you know, from 8 till 4 in the morning, and we have to wake up with the kids. And, uh, so, yeah, we do have a hectic schedule, and then I get out there in traffic to go get products, and I'm, oh, my God, it's hell. Well, that, that it, it's a good thing you, you your commute is so short now that they're shutting down your entrance for exit ramp. Oh, Jeez, yeah, that's a pain too. Um, Try the helicopter. What's uh, what what's what's the uh, what are the future plans for 2015? Is there anything super exciting coming along you want to tease people about right now? Um, I've got a sensor I've been working on. I send it out to my focus groups. I've gotten some responses out of it. Andre from. Uh, North Texas Ghost Society, he's, he's giving me some things on it. and I like to get, before I put anything out there, it has to get results. I'm not going to just put something out there and say, all right, buy it and let me know if it gets results. <laughs> you know, right. I've, I've got to have some results on it. So, like I said earlier, I'm trying to get into objects where you can have uh, physical, it's hard to say physical when there's nothing physical there, but... Uh, physical type manipulation, like poltergeist activity and things like that. And um, I'm working on something with continuity. And what that is is basically, you know, our bodies can connect electricity because electricity runs through our bodies. So uh, the way I describe it is I'm going to have a pod that has two touch pads on it. And if you connect, if you put a piece of metal between these touch pads, it's going to make a cool noise, whatever, it can light up. Um, but if it does go off, something has to be touching that. It, it cannot false. Um, I've tried to make it false with different magnetic spectrums and putting things close to it. It has to be touched. So basically, you can take one finger on one pad and one finger on the other, and it'll, you know, the electricity goes to your body. You can actually be touching another investigator, touch a touch pad, and have somebody, you know, say, hey, can you touch a touch pad? And then, you know, so somebody grabs that investigator, it's going to go off. It's just things that I'm trying to move forward to see if we can get that physical manipulation. I mean, people have said they've been touched and things like that. I've got my own claims. Uh, it's just it, there's too many claims out there for it not to happen and objects moving where I'm trying to, to detect that as well. I've, so I've got that sensor. I've got a couple other sensors, and I'm sure I'll have five, ten more before I even know it. But I like to deal with cameras, too. I've got a lot of cameras out, so I'm, I'm sure I'll have a couple more cameras put out there as well. We, we, awesome. need, we need him to set up some of that stuff in the shop with all those stupid sure. doors opening and shutting. I know. I keep hearing that door. 
I, I'm telling you, there now there's two doors that open and shut by themselves. Nice. I've got a, you know, I've got a crazy clip. You can look at it. It's a TPI investigate Stanley Hotel, and there's a clip in there where the window opens and closes. And I go into detail trying to debunk it, and then something crazy happens on it. You got to go look at that. It's really cool. Now, if the windows at the shop open and shut, then we're in trouble because they're all painted. Oh, yeah, because they're all they're painted, painted stuck. <laughs> and, yeah. and have been from four coats before we ever put a drop of paint right. on them. So. Right. We, we never painted the windows. <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah. So, yeah. It, 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 the, 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 the physical movement that's happening out there at the shop right now is very difficult to explain. Um, right. Well, twice in one day, the bathroom door shut, and the second time, Eric had just walked out of it. There's no wind in that shop. You've been in that shop. Yeah, yeah, it's there's, calm. And there's no vacuum. There's no vacuum that would form, and that door to that bathroom um, is a solid wooden door, uh -huh. and it's not warping or changing or shifting or, I mean, it's just, I've tried to explain it too, and it just it don't work. Well, and yeah, we did. Cameras in there. And then we had the lady come in, and the the storeroom door behind the counter kind of squeaked, and she's like, "Oh, it must be the wind," and it slammed open to, <laughs> to show her there was no fan on in there. There's no window in there; it's sealed off. Right. Yeah, she left real quick. Yeah, haven't seen her That's since. <laughs> it happens. Yeah, I've had the doors. You know. Doors opening and closing are pretty common. I've caught it on film a couple times. Not like you would want where it slams shut, but you know, it still does happen. Um, it, that's what I'm after. I want to know what is moving these objects. Right. You know? Well, the first time that one day when the bathroom door shut, it slammed. I thought it was a car door. The dog heard it. The cat heard it. And I happened to be heading for the kitchen and noticed the door was completely shut. Right. And... and don't everybody, don't anybody think that if you show up to Metaluna, Annabelle's going to pop out of the dressing room. And no. I mean, it's not, no. But there, there is some, there is some, and it's not even, I wouldn't even rank it as a poltergeist activity. It's just, it's just. Crazy. Just things are, are, are moving that shouldn't be moving. Right. But not in an evil or malicious way. No. I mean, she didn't walk in there and there's stuff everywhere or things Well, when there over. is, that's Coda's fault. Yeah. Not, not. That's the guard cat. Yeah. No. <laughs> That has nothing I to love do with that cat. <laughs> yeah. um, and we also wouldn't have to, we'd have to be careful about putting cameras in there full time, Jeremy, because it is a bathroom. Don't want any kind well, of, right. any yeah. kind but of weird. But we, we could put them down the hallway. Wouldn't want to be an IP camera and then charge people to go watch it or anything. <laughs> we, we could shoot it down the hallway, though, and you would still have That's the full, full vision of That's the door. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Or just have them sign a disclaimer. No big deal. Yeah, right, yeah. And, and before you go to the bathroom, just sign this waiver of, you know. <laughs> hey, nobody minded the talking ghost in there all weekend. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, in the name of sign. <laughs> right? right? Um, um, and the Germans have been studying that way for years. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, you, we mentioned this earlier, just so everybody knows. Uh, it. Kim and I and Jeremy um, and Paranology stuff and, and Pam will all be down there at Jefferson's History, Haunts, and Legends, the fall edition. November 1st. November 1st. My favorite edition. And we're hoping we don't have to deal with the teachers with tasers this year. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And we're not going to leave you this time either. Yay. You mean we actually get to dine with people? Yeah. I know. <laughs> Well, you're you're not gonna you're not gonna take Larry's spot and push everybody back an hour and a half, are you? No, no, okay. can't do that. And Larry Flaxman, I love you to death. Just giving you a hard time because I, <laughs> I know you're watching. I don't even know what spot I have, but you know I'm gonna get Pam up there. She doesn't know it yet. She probably does now. I think she's listening, but yeah, we're gonna get her up there. Pam, if I can do it, you can do it, girl. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> easy, and that's a great crowd. Jody does such a great job down there with that event. And it's so much yeah. fun. I mean, yeah. there's always craziness going on. And there's there's some stuff at some of those locations. There, there really is down there. Oh, no. Yeah, I just yeah that antique mall? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, that's, that's one of my favorites. I mean, 
There's, there's, I think there's what five or six uh, locations this year. I've yeah. seen no four idea. so far. Really? I mean, last year was nuts. It, it, uh, yeah, it's awesome to go do that many investigations. As long as you can get everybody, everybody to cooperate, but well, you know, this, it's still this, fun, you know. This year, fortunately, we sit in one location while everybody else travels. Oh, nice! I'll keep saying that. And instead of us, you know, trying to catch up and keep up with or her, entire her, groups. Yeah, because herding her a group of adults that late at night is like is like trying to push a chain or, <laughs> or, or get toddlers to fall in line. It, especially, it's possible, right. it's just not very likely. Especially teachers with tasers. Yeah, especially teachers with tasers. and, oh. and but Sponsored yeah. by Budweiser. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that one, was sponsored, that one was sponsored by Captain Morgan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have... <laughs> Or Smirnoff, one of the two. Um, Jeremy, I want to thank you for coming on tonight. Um, I mean, we've we've been we've been out of loop with this for a couple months because we needed to take a break. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for coming on. I want everybody to be sure and go to Paranologies. Let me put that graphic up. Paranologies.com. You need to go check out the two devices that we spent a little time talking about tonight, which is going to be the Infrascope. And the paranormal person, the paranormal PDA, um, yeah. panoptic, panoptic PD. I'm sorry, I, I I lost six syllables there. The paranology <laughs> panoptic PDA, um, and and be sure to go check all these out. Put an order in with Jeremy. Like he said, he'll get it out to you within three days. So and, and if nothing else, he's always got these little periscopes. Grab a bunch they're of great. them. They're Yeah. Oh yeah. And they're very visual. That's the one thing you will. That's the one thing you will enjoy. I mean, the only other thing that I've seen in the paranormal world so far that is, is the K two. I know it's a doorstop. Uh, people don't even have don't don't even send. Yeah, the email. but they go off everywhere. We had <laughs> we had this on the sixth floor of the Marshall Hotel. Four of us up there stomping, running, jumping, screaming the whole nine yards, acting fools. This thing is clear on the other side, and only once did it go off. But it went off for like five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the only time we saw and it the entire night. Once again, like I said, because everything is so visually oriented, from 50 foot away in the dark or 100 foot away in the dark, you can still see it yep. and still see exactly the level of activity. And that's, that, that's, that's great. And we all walked over to it and made a circle around it. And then it went dead. Or it didn't go dead. The lights went out. And we were walking up to it and touching it and everything else, trying to get it to relight, and it wouldn't. Yeah. I love it when that happens, yeah. But th there were four of us up there, so it wasn't just one or two of us going, oh, we're Jeremy fans. No, th at this point, one, one person had no idea who you were. <laughs> but that's okay. It, it just adds to the credibility of it. Yeah. I don't care if people know who I am. I just, you know, use the equipment checked out. Oh, yeah. Periscope is one of my favorites, I will say. Mine, too. And it's got pretty colors. Yeah. So it when does. I see it across the room, it's like, the rainbow, move. Yeah. Um, and, Jeremy, once again, thank you for coming on tonight. Um, we want to remind everybody, tune in next Friday. We're going to be talking with another very good friend of ours. We are. Yes, and it's actually it's actually the woman that wrote a book that's got Kim in it. Deanna Kelly. Yep, we're going to be talking with Miss Deanna Kelly, uh, author, I guess philosopher is a good word for Deanna. Paranormal investigator. Yeah, paranormal investigator. Um, so don't miss that. Be sure and tune in next week. Um, with that, we're going to get out of here. If you are out investigating this weekend, be careful. And it is the start of Halloween month. Spooky. So, yeah, don't get into too much trouble. Yeah, and and please, please don't tell everybody it's a demon because it ain't. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Good night. Thank you guys. As you guys know him. Yeah. Um, you know, I've just got just different ways that I can offer the homeowner that they may be comfortable of them coming out. Well, I think I think that's the best way because I mean, some people go in and oh, it's a demon and. That just freaks them out even more, or they leave their house, <laughs> or you know, uh, yeah. just, just ridiculousness. Yeah. Oh, I've, I've got some great ones. I mean, I've had people say there are fairies in closets, and oh, five hundred dollars later, they'll get rid of it. Yeah. 
For a for mere, mere thousand dollars, I can remove that curse that's been following you for all yeah. these years. <laughs> yeah. Gaze. Gaze into the egg. No, no, I'm kidding. Um, <coughs> let's, 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 let's kind of, let's, let's talk a little bit about some of the stuff you got coming out, Jeremy, because um, the first picture I'm going to put up is of your newest device um, called the Infrascope, and you, we talked about this this weekend. I'm really excited about this. I, have you had any more field tests with this? I've had one field test, and I'm actually, as soon as I get out there with you guys, I'm going to head out and do another one. Um, awesome. Specifically on just that piece of equipment. Um, yeah, I mean, you want me to tell you a little about it. It's basically, you know, a lot of my equipment is based off uh, static or, or some kind of, something that has to do with the electromagnetic field has to interrupt whatever it is. And that's how a lot of paranormal equipment is. So I'm trying to get into more of, you know, I told you before I was highly interested in, in poltergeist cases, which objects move on their own or can be touched, etc. And um, so I'm trying to deal with new sensors that actually have to be physically manipulated or, you know, just very sensitive pieces of equipment. Now, the infrascope has several... To thank you for that. There it goes. Yeah. Because, because it, it, when you start to do video and you want to try to record things and you want people to be able to see how a device works or be, even be able to know that it goes off. Um, the way the way you've come at things, I'm 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 I'm, I'm impressed with how you you thought about how to make that happen. And cool, we, I appreciate it. And we've we've even talked about some stuff that you had planned to try in the future with some uh, some stuff that's going to probably cook people's noodles. And we've got we even do have an announcement for the new item that you have on your website too tonight. But we'll get to that here in a minute. Um, okay. Uh, what's what's been your just just so to to keep the viewers informed because this is this is not necessarily about prior knowledge it's about you too. What's what's been okay. your personal motivation uh, with, with all of this? With the with not just the not just the company but your involvement in the paranormal. What what's been your motivation to keep you going? Right, it's just um, personal intriguement to the afterlife. You know, what happens after we die? Um, can we talk to our loved ones? Um, just trying to put some of those questions at ease to not only myself, you know, I've been lucky that I haven't had many of my loved ones, um, pass my, my grandparents just died last year. And that was the first experience I've actually dealt with death. Um, I handled it pretty well, I think, you know, but, uh, I have tried to communicate with my grandparents and, um, might as well. I've been doing it for <laughs> just about all my life, but, yeah, I think it's just personal treatment of what what there is after, you know, after we pass. Right, right. I know. I know. We've we've in a lot of the people that we've talked to and met in the paranormal, Kim and I, that's been everybody that has truly has a fire burning for it. Um, there's a personal motivation behind it, and it, and I just like to ask people that way. Well, I, I know I know you've you've done these. You've we, we've actually had you on the network several times, and I know you've you've done probably more radio interviews, internet radio interviews than you can shake a stick at. But just one more time, what was the inspiration? Let everybody know what the inspiration was for why and how you started Paranology. My inspiration was uh, actually helping out families. Um, you know, I would do investigations. I do have my own team, um, Texas Paranormal Investigations. I've had it for quite a while, since 97. Uh, and I was always intrigued with poltergeist cases, which usually surrounds children. Um, and so, you know, 99% of my investigations are residential. So I would go in there, you know, with our old cameras and stuff we had and, and constantly try to come up with new ways to explain to the homeowner what's going on in their house. Um, you know, I went to school for electrical and audio engineering. So building gadgets is, is not, you know, hard at all. It's just trying to come up with something, you know, easy to show my client, hey, you may or may not have something in your house, but, but here's why. And then instead of bringing them all this equipment in digital format that they're not going to understand, I'm trying to make right. simplify it in, in little, you know, pods and things that I design. Where did you guys get that picture of me? Oh, my God. Oh, oh, the Yeti has his ways, Jeremy. You should know that. <laughs> After last weekend, game on, buddy. Um, oh, yeah. Um, we well, all got 
last weekend. <laughs> yeah, what happens in Gladewater stays in Gladewater. <laughs> um, um, you know, and the, the one thing I want I want to mention real quick so all of our viewers know um, your equipment. Um, and let me let me turn on this brilliant example that is actually my wife's. Um, all of your stuff is very visual, and I like. back on air how about that <laughs> well, welcome to friday october 3rd i have worn my i wore my fancy t-shirt me too um we we want to thank everybody for joining us tonight uh we are are and or took a break for a little while we've been doing this show for going on five years and we just needed to take a little bit of a break yeah we've been doing this show for almost six years yeah yeah um before we get going, Rogue, we got a really special guest tonight, and I'm sure everybody's here to see him. Um, I wanna, yeah, not me, our guest. Well, but they might come to see me. They might. I doubt it, but maybe. All right, here we go. Um, Y'all be sure and tune in during the week. Check our ads during the week. You can find all kinds of great entertainment, uh, not only on PIN, but on PIN2 and on our PIN radio page. Um, and as always, PEN is powered by... Metaluna Boutique and Stones, one of our guest's favorite hangouts, and apparently he has a job there, too. <laughs> yeah. But tonight, we are joined by our very dear friend. Um, he is the owner and operator of Paranologies, um, a supplier of outstanding paranormally-based equipment and, Mine's right up and devices. Is that a good right term, Jeremy? Yeah, that'll work. All right. Uh, but we're joined tonight by Mr. Jeremy Jones of Paranology. Jeremy, how have you been? We had, it's like we haven't seen you since like last weekend. I know, man. It's been a long time. How you guys been? Oh, we've been good. We've been good. Our viewers kind of get to see that, you know, people that are that are being interviewed on Pima TV, even though they are hugely popular, they're still people too. You know, right. people lose that perspective sometimes on, on, on when they get to thinking about celebrities or the paracelebs. the paracelebs or even even just like normal actors and actresses they kind of lose perspective that they're they're human too you know right. people talk to them like they're their character does that make sense you know what i mean so i, I, like yeah, I always i always like to make sure people feel can kind of see that that human side of everybody right you know that's the one question that is it's too hard to answer i mean what happens after you die and right that's what, that's what keeps me in this hobby. I do some other hobbies, like storm chasing, things like that. And uh, I've lost a lot of hobbies just from being bored of them or whatever. But I but can't really call this a hobby anymore. It's my life. But, uh, you know, it, it does keep me very well involved with that question. Well, isn't it funny how we all start out with doing this as a hobby and all of a sudden it <laughs> just kind of takes over everything? Yep. Yeah, I am blessed to be doing what I love for a living, I will say. Have you uh, have you run or ever run across anything that you you had to call in any kind of help for or? Yeah, I mean, I've, uh, there's, there's so many things you try to do to put the homeowner at ease, and I don't I don't do a lot of those things. I mean, I go in there and, and try to give them the best answer I can, you know, from what my either my equipment or my cameras catch I, I never tell them it's a ghost or, or anything factual i never tell them anything like that but i do you know have several ways that i can get some help may put them to ease um i've got several people richard contrary 